Hello, I'm testing. Hello, I'm testing. Hi, DeVille. I was muted, sorry. How are you? Good. Good. Yeah, every, everybody likes to play this game where they jump on the last second. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I mean, it's okay for me. It may, may not be for you. <laughs> How's it going? Good. It's been, I've been busy on Fridays a lot lately, so I haven't been able to make the meetings. Um, I don't have, I still don't have a lot of apps coming in, but I have some closings and I have a new realtor partner. Great. Done some, yeah, I've done some realtor tours. So it's just building, I guess, you know. How are you doing? Um, hanging in there. Good. And remind me again where you're at, Stephen. Uh, we're in Atlanta. Atlanta, Georgia. How do you like it there? I mean, I've been here all my life. Oh, okay. Okay. Like, so you must I'm like, love it. Yeah, I'm like Jesus. I never like lived 30 miles from my house or something like that. <laughs> uh, so who we got? We got Lauren. We got Joyce. Morning. Hey, good morning. I said good make... morning, but I was muted. Joyce, I'm going to make you uh, get on camera. You know, I didn't read your email because I want to be surprised when you make your announcement later. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I got to figure out my camera here this morning. I've got workers in the background, so. Well, you can turn it on and turn it off. Where? Where is my uh, lovely guest? Hi, Stephen. Hi, Nitty. Does that lady have a, a work permit or something? She's a green card holder. Oh, awesome. Okay. So, yes, yeah, so he's just a non occupant co borrower. No, so he is moving back to Georgia. She wants to keep the name in his name only. She's saying, I don't want to be on the application also. Okay. Yeah. They're, they're going to change once they see the rates and then they're going to switch. 
I'm right. just but it. if he's moving back to Atlanta, then I think this would be his primary residence. He doesn't have any house here. He has a house in Dallas. Oh, I see. So can he um, can he work from Atlanta? He will. Yes, his office address is Johns Creek. Oh, well, okay. Yes. Okay, so we're waiting on Melody. Hey, Melody. Awesome. All right, see ya. So we also, I had two other people confirm, but maybe they got busy. Nidhi, did you get your question answered about the appraisal rush? Yes, yes. Yeah, it's $200 extra for the rush piece. Hi, Melody. She's muted. Melody, you're muted. There we go. Hi. I'm sorry. I actually, in my mind, I had 11. So. Right. So 11 Eastern, remember? Yeah, no, I got it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we're glad you're here. And I have a couple people that will probably show up late, but that's just the way it goes. So. All right, so Melody is in, can I say you're in San Antonio? Yeah, a little bit north of, yeah. So Melody is in San Antonio, Texas, and you've been in business how long? Originating? Um, so, oh, originating on my own? Um, yes. Like, just for two years. Two years, and had a great first year. You closed how much? Um, a lot of those were refis because of COVID, so the first year was 112. Wow, 112, but even if, I mean, what, two thirds of them were refis, then that means yeah, it was. Yeah. So that still yeah. leaves 30 to 40 closings. <sighs> right, right. So, and then uh, then this, the, the last, the following year was mostly, it was all, mo I mean, the, I had a few refis, but mostly purchase and I did 39 last year. Okay, great. So it sounds like about that many the first year too. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, so tell us how you did it. How did you first get started, um, not necessarily with the refis, but with the purchase business? Um, so it's all about doing your job and doing it well. I mean, more than anything, you can have a million lunches with a million realtors, but if you don't do your job and don't follow through and don't do what you say you're going to do, it doesn't matter. So it, it really all boils down to selling yourself and making sure that you don't over promise and under deliver. So mm -hmm. my main thing is under promise and over deliver every time, you know? Uh, so, so I agree with you a hundred percent, but I'm gonna drill deeper. So okay. unless people know, so that's kind of the theory of getting repeat business, right. but unless the people don't know you, they don't even know how terrific you are um, you know, so you're, you're just starting fresh. How do you first right. get going? Well, um, you got to get your name out there. And so even if you're brand new, you know, like marketing yourself is key. And so it's like making cute little pop buys to stop by, um, open houses on the weekends that have your card and have a little bit of information and talk to them. Say, Hey, if you ever need me to sit in and in an open house for you stopping by builders, talking to them about sitting in their office and pre-qualifying people for them on busy weekends. So I've totally done that. That has given my, uh, my business a boost myself by having that opportunity to, with builders and telling realtors, I'm going to stop by and do an open house for you. And at open houses, I bring gift cards. I bring coffee gift cards and, and um, you know, restaurant gift cards, whatever you can afford. And then I do a free draw. I do a free drawing. People have to sign in, and then I do a free a draw, a free giveaway, and I give one or two, and it can be ten dollar gift card. 
people just want stuff, mm -hmm. right? And they'll remember you. I, I got a lead because I gave somebody a $50 massage gift card, right? So just right. So, like okay. That. So I'm going to drill down even farther. So when you make that, so first you're going to contact the real estate agent and say, I see you're having an open house and then ask them, or you're just popping in with gift cards. Um, so on open houses that, that I do the, the giveaways, those are ones that I've either been invited to, or I call the realtors and ask them if I can come and hang out the whole day with them. Okay. Pop buys are a little bit different. Pop buys are stopping by. You find out who's doing open houses on the weekends. You have a box of little tiny, and I can even send, um, amazing ideas. I can send an email if you want to you for you to sure. share. Yeah, and we'll always take amazing just, ideas. Just cute, like like um, before school starts, you know, little highlighters that say your referrals are the highlight of my day. Everyone needs highlighters when school starts, right? So just silly, maybe some people might think, but you, they'll remember you. And right. then to me, the most important thing for my business has been handwritten thank you cards. It's something we do harp on. So what, when do you send out those cards? I send them out on contract. Okay. And then I send them out on closing. Okay. And then I'm, I send them out at the end of the year or the beginning of the year. Depends on how, how much I've procrastinated. And don't procrastinate. <laughs> okay. Um, so, okay. So you're sending a thank you note to the, uh, the borrowers and the agents? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So on contract, I, I actually send cookies to the borrowers that say congratulations okay. on their contract on contract or clear to close. And I always send it to their office. Right. Uh, right. So we do the same that we switched from sending to the office the past couple of years because nobody right. was going into the office. Yeah. But, but yeah, I but yeah, I totally agree. Um, and I've talked to this um, with Joyce, our transaction coordinator. If you know by chance that they're, that they're working in an office, send them there because then several people see them, they ask about them, and then, of course, they say, oh, my lender didn't send me anything. You right. know, or, I was lucky yeah. to get a phone call. So and closing, okay. closing gifts, my closing gift is super simple. It's a wooden board that says, welcome to the, like the most recent, welcome to the Ruelas family that I have handmade. It cost me 30 bucks. Totally okay. worth it. And that's, so we do, is that a cutting board? Cause I do cutting boards no. too. Um, I've done cutting boards in the past that were personalized. Nope. It's just, it's a, it's a welcome sign, like welcome okay. to our home. And okay. it's very rustic and you know, Texas, we're super rustic. Like everyone eats it up. Right. 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 <laughs> um, so on the, on the contract that I send to the buyers or to the agents, to the buyer's agent, I send a thank you card that says, thank you so much. Uh, for trusting me, have a cup of coffee on me. And it's a $5 gift card. You, you, you can't do too much. You'll get in trouble, right? You can do a $5 gift card and you're good. Right. Um, as far, and then the, the seller's agent, I send one and say, thank you for choosing my client for this home. And I put the address and I'll, I'll send you a picture of it. And I put in two bags of sweet dream tea. And I say, uh, um, I hope you uh, rest well and have sweet dreams that will get your client or that will, will sell your house. It'll be a smooth closing, basically. So, right. Just so, certain things that make you stand out different. You know, so I've, yeah. They're cute and they put a smile on your face so that, yeah. you know, all I'm thinking is, you know, this Melody, she's a nice person and I like her and she made me smile. Right. And so that gets, I guess, the foot in the door. And then um, as you were talking about um, your follow through um, and your expertise is what gets the relationship really rolling. So yeah. um, know your job, <laughs> know your job. OK, yeah. so what do you mean by that? Are you talking about know the process or know the guidelines or what? All of it. Right. So, so no, know, know how to order a verification of employment if your processor can't. Okay. Right. No, I mean, you shouldn't like have to do all that, but if, if you need to, especially to qualify for somebody, you need to know how to order a verification of employment. You shouldn't have to call up somebody and ask them to do it. Right. Okay. So certain things like that, it helped me that I started in setup 
and I know how I know how to set up a loan from front to mm. you know but it's it, that's where I think that has helped my expertise is just really knowing that and then also knowing your knowing who to go to if you need something know Absolutely. where to find it don't just walk around saying hey uh what's the new fha guideline and then someone says oh it's it's 439 250 and so you're you know you tell your client that don't do that don't ask your your coworker. they may do great loans and they may do a good job but they don't know everything so look in the guidelines always know the va handbook um, know where to find that know where to find all your guidelines and know who to talk to if you can't find something and ask them to show you where it's at. Can you show me where in the guidelines it says that? Right. We, we so, will be 100% better for that. Right. So, so quick, we want that answer right away because our borrower is on hold, but right. uh, we don't stop to learn actually where to get the answers. Yeah, right. you're so right. You know, I urge um, my rookies to uh, be on the ops calls, even though 90% of the call are talking about things they're never going to do understanding the process and how it works it gives you a better ability to service the the customer through the whole process so melody so uh one thing i want to talk about is you mentioned that you do a lot of va business mm -hmm. and you shamed me because <laughs> you asked me where the nearest military base was and i wasn't sure i knew there was dobbins air force base but actually there's fort mcpherson that is over an East Point, which is very close to us. So we do have a couple of military bases here uh, near Atlanta. So tell us how you fostered that business. Oh, okay. Well, I've been a military wife for 27 years. So it's really okay. important to me. And I, I feel like... Tell your husband we appreciate his service. <laughs> Thank you. Both of them? <laughs> Both. Oh, okay. Okay. I wasn't going to go there. Okay. Both of them, yeah. <laughs> no, um, so, well, first of all, I wanted to say um, on the other aspect, like the importance of pre-approving people and not pre-qualifying. And I'm sure we drill that in, you drill that into all of your loan officers, right? You absolutely look at documents, right? That's part of knowing your job and doing it well. But um, the other thing for VA is, is just being a part of the community. You know, but I know so many VAs, so it's hard for me because it's second nature. But I talk to everybody. I talk to the cashier. I talk to the lady in the stall in the bathroom. I talk, you know, I ask everybody if they own a home and if they're looking. So that's kind of part of that. Okay. <laughs> that's how I'm self-sourced, right? Okay. So, um, okay. So let's talk about that a little bit. So you're telling me that uh, you don't necessarily do any specific prospecting for VA loans. You're just in a community with a lot of VA loans happening. Um, we we do well, and because I'm in the community and I have access to the base, so that's not really fair to like all of y'all. Do you know what I mean? I can go on base and teach a class. I can't brand it, but I I know enough people where I can go into the the wounded warrior center or wherever and talk to them about a class and teach on on VA stuff, and so. I think that's yeah. a great idea. Um, I read some t statistic that only 22% of veterans ever use their uh, VA eligibility to buy a house. Yeah, and, I think it's 15. Oh, okay, even worse. And since yeah. it's such a great, well, I mean, that number should be what, 70, 80%, right? So uh, right. it's such a great loan. It just means that they're unaware of the benefit. Um, so yes. Or so they're they're not just unaware, but they might be misinformed, right? Well, we already had a VA loan. We can't have another one or we hit our limit. So they don't understand that once they sell their house, oh, you're, your, your eligibility is freed up now. You can buy another house. Or right? they think it's specifically if you want to do hundred percent financing. Right. And so they think, oh, well, I have a down payment. I can go conventional not knowing they would still get a better deal going VA with five or 10% down. So right. uh, I think that that's really terrific. And I don't think that you have to be, um, you know, connect married to somebody in the service to be able to teach a class on VA. And I think, no. uh, you know, teaching a class, anytime we do things uh, with VA loans, it's like, 
we we double dip in uh, good karma, right? Because we're uh, helping people, but then we're helping veterans, which is certainly right. a group that we want to go the extra mile. Um, right. go, go ahead, Devel. What what are your thoughts? I'm sorry, I just have a quick question for you. So we have a big Air Force base here where I live, um, and I've been considering trying to find out how to get into that market. Do you know who, um, since I obviously, I don't have base clearance, who can I call over there to get my foot in or how do, how do, how would you suggest I go about doing that? That's a really good question. So the problem with going on base is you can't brand yourself. So unless you're like a super VA expert and then, and then you can give out your information and then it's, it's very like, okay, fill out, fill out this stuff and then they'll call. So it's, it's really it's, it's kind of tricky with that. So what I would do is find lender or uh, realtors that are, that, that claim to be VA realtors. Okay. That that's, okay. that that's their niche. Right. And okay. then if you, if you know your guidelines enough and feel comfortable teaching a class or can take Steven with you and you guys can take a class or whoever, then, you know, have, have a class at a, at a, like a, a meet and greet at a Starbucks near the base. You know, okay. have a right. You don't to have to be on base. I mean, mm -hmm. they don't stay on base twenty four seven, right? Right. So right, uh, and it's almost yeah. harder to brand on base. So it's easier if you can find somewhere close and do like a Saturday, um, a Saturday morning, like I don't remember your name, coffee with Christy, you know, or or Saturdays with right. you know, okay. and um, oh Deville, <laughs> Saturdays yeah. with Deville or or whatever. Find something that that's just you. Find find a, a little something that can stick in somebody's mind that you can market for you. Like I'm mortgages with Mel, right? And okay. so and then sometimes I call myself the Earl Girl, right? So just just something fun that people remember, and then you know hashtag yourself and market market the heck out of yourself okay all right thank you i appreciate it yeah so um those are really uh, some terrific ideas and i know that uh once you get in with the va community then a lot of times um you know they stay loyal and they refer their friends right so uh melody any other advice for our new loan officers to to get their uh snowball going down the hill mm -hmm. No, I mean, I think we kind of covered it all. Just, just know your, know your job and do it well. And, and, you know, always do what you say you're going to do and people will remember you and they'll refer you. And also, oh, here's, here's one more thing. There are certain key points during the loan that are a great time to ask for referral, right? Milestones. Uh, Right. Contract. Sure. Uh, when you're pre-approving in, eh. but when, when you've done a really good job, you know, you've done a good job. When, when you get that clear to close, that's a fantastic time to ask for referrals. Right. And right. then anytime and then, you have good news. Right. And then when you lock the rate and your rates, awesome. Right. So Melody, how <laughs> interested are, are they in you the week after closing? Awesome. He, okay. Oh, here's not, not as interested as when you're you telling them their loans approved. <laughs> so do you, right. But, um, I also, after closing, I send them an email with all of their important documents. I send them their closing disclosure. I send them their survey and I send them their mortgage note. Okay. And, and I tell them here are the important documents that you're going to need for. And sometimes the, the, the deed or the, um, I can't think right now, um, but, um, but title insurance policy. Yeah. Your insurance policy and even the appraisal. Right. So I sent him like four or five different things. I sent it to him and I say, these are the documents that you're going to need to go to the post office and roll your kids in school. If you need to refinance, you have to have your mortgage note and your survey. So what's going to happen when they go to refinance and they think, the, whoever lender that they're talking to, if you haven't followed up with them, is asking them for their mortgage note and their survey, and they're trying to look for it. What are they going to remember? Oh, Melody sent that to me, you know, two years ago in my, it's still in my email. They're going to go back and go, we really should talk to Melody before we refinance, Absolutely. you know, because I always put on there, 
if you're going to refinance, please give, give me an opportunity to help you. Right. So, yeah. okay. So Melody, thank you for that insight. Um, Lauren, is there anything Melody said that uh, caught your ear? Yeah, I mean, I love a lot of it. I like the different points where you were talking about sending out cards, um, you know, the different milestones in the whole loan process. Um, and then being able to take something to your open houses, um, you know, if you're, if you're going in and you've already made contact with that realtor, something that you could have people leave their information for you and, you know, give them something in return. I mean, a five or $10 gift card is, you know, pretty simple. Um, but then at least, you know, you're getting that information you're making that extra point of contact. So I think that's awesome. Yeah. And another thing, thank you. <laughs> and another thing on the open houses is that if, if it's an open house that you were invited to, or that you're staying for the day with them, uh, I always bring co-branded flyers with me. Mm -hmm. So I brand the agent with me and I, I put together these little pre-approval folders that you can even do or not do, but they can hand them out automatically. They're handing out to everybody that walks in. Your name is on it. I love right. that. Yeah. And we have a marketing department that can whip those out pretty easily. Yeah. So, um, so Nitty, anything uh, Melody touched on that you think is a good idea? Yes. So I have closed a few loans, Melody, but I never sent, you know, a gift to the listing agent or to my agent, which I would start doing it now. I should appreciate their business. Yeah. And thank you for bringing that to my point. Yeah. I love the yeah. idea you're sending two tea bags and saying, have sweet dreams. Hope we close this deal sweetly. I like that idea. Yeah, it's super cute. And I'll, I'll send a picture of it sure. to Stephen. Yeah, that will be helpful. Thank you. Great. Great. <laughs> You're welcome. Melody, so, do you send it to the agent's home? or do? Because so many of them don't work in their offices anymore. Where do you normally send that to? That's always a difficult thing is to know where to send it. I ask them what their best mailing address is. And then they're like, why? And so I tell them, I said, I just have a card to send to you. Do you want me to send it to your office or your home? And some, you know, just to their office, but people give me their home address too. Um, yeah, that's a great idea. You could just ask them, right? Yeah. So, okay. Well, Melody, thank you so much for sharing. Um, oh, sure. <laughs> Um, Thank you for having me. That was very fun. impressive how much business you've done and, and put together in such a short amount of time. Oh, that makes me feel good because I'm, you know, you're always trying to do better than the year before and no one did better than their COVID years. So. Right. So, yeah, so that was a tough one to beat. But yeah. um well, thank you very much. And I'll, I don't want to take up too much of your time. So uh, we'll talk to you later. Okay. Thank you. All thank right. You. Bye bye. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Have a good day. All right. Well, I guess uh, Adam and um, Brock are not going to show, which is fine. We, we can have a party without them. So uh, Joyce has got some very, very exciting news. She, uh, I actually do not know, but she uh, has added up your uh, prospecting um uh, scorecards just to uh tell Devel we had an eight-week contest for a $500 prize um with these uh prospecting scorecards and I can send you a copy if I didn't already where basically uh you get, it's a point system it's kind of gamified where you get a lot of points for face-to-face -face contacts and then fewer points um for more um distant uh, contacts such as email or text. So Joyce, give us the big news. You have to unmute yourself. That was the, <laughs> that was the final tallies. <laughs> so I hate this y'all because it was so close. I mean, I would have rather uh, have it in a blowout, you know, rather than be so close, literally within 73 points of each other. So Nitty had 23.75 and Lauren had 23.02. Woo! So close, so close. So Nitty, drum roll, is the winner. <laughs> Congratulations. So, um, okay. So that's awesome. So let's see. Okay. So pretty good. So almost 50 uh, per week. So Nitty, so uh, tell us how you racked up all those points. 
meeting the realtors. Every day I made sure that I'm meeting at least one, if not two. Then when I went to the open house, I met close to 15 realtors and I had like maybe 10 minute conversation with them, but some didn't have the card. So I didn't put that in my tally sheet. The ones that I had card for and the ones I put it in uh, top of mine, that's the only one I counted. But yeah, I make sure that I'm meeting one realtor a day right now. So Nidhi, I see uh, in Encompass, you've got uh, like a lot more pre-approvals and loan apps and TBDs and things going on than you did uh, 30, uh, 30 or 60 days ago. Uh, do you think some of these face-to-face -face contacts have, have been paying yes. off? Yes. And then I'm like, if some realtor is putting a post in Facebook, even if it's in the group and I'm not friends with them, I would say that nice property, I wish I could buy it right away. Our nice home, I'm sure it would go easily beyond asking price. And then they'll, they'll personal message me, thank you Niti for uh, posting on the group. And I'm like, yeah, sure. Then I won't say anything to them. After two or three days, I'll be like, hey, why don't we meet and see how we can help each other? And if they say yes, I meet them. If they say no, I already have a lender. I'm like, sure, no problem, but let's meet just to talk about how we can, you know, see if we can help each other in the future, if not now. So it's laying uh, the groundwork. And of course, um, you know, uh, commenting on posts and emails and texts and things are, uh, are all helpful in laying the groundwork so that they associate, you know, the name Lauren or Nitty with, uh, you know, something positive in their brain. They don't even know what it is, but then they hear that name again and they think, oh yeah, that was a nice person or how do I know them or whatever. And of course, as powerful as that is, meeting face-to-face -face is just a hundred times more powerful. Uh, Devel, uh, you agree with that philosophy? Yes, I've been, um, because I've been meeting a lot of realtors too lately, so it's almost like when you're face to face with them, they, I don't know if it just develops more trust, like right away. Sure. Um, than them just getting like a random message or email, because I'm sure they're inundated with that. And so, yeah, yeah, I definitely agree with that. So Nitty, I'm going to send you a $500 Amazon gift card. How about that? Wow. So uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Yeah, so if you were a nice person. It's already if, running in my mind, what do I need to buy from Amazon for $500 now? Well, if you were a nice person, you'd take us all out for drinks. But anyway, I'm just saying. Anyway. <laughs> I'm in. I'm in with that. Okay. So anyway, um, so I'm hoping in, in my investment, and I'm happy to do that, is that you kind of get into that thinking. Are you you know, in that mindset of, now I know we're not going to keep score in the future, but you can use that worksheet if you want to. But Lauren, are you kind of thinking like, oh, I could get, you know, write a thank you note and get some points or, oh, I could meet that agent and get some points. You know, that's kind of the way I'm I want sure. your brain to be thinking. Yeah, definitely. Okay, good. Then it worked. Okay, so we're going to move right along and we're going to talk about now, Devel, have you signed up for a bomb bomb? I have not. No. Do you know what it is? I do not. Okay. I know I vaguely remember someone talking about it, but probably me. Did did um did have you ever gotten one of those videos from Brian Lavelle where he says, "Oh, the top ten loan officers last month." Or, yes. Or and and it has like that little quick video, and then you click on it, and then you play the video. Yes. So that's bomb bomb. So okay. they have an exclusive on embedding a video in an email. So, and it's very powerful. And um, so what I urge you to do today is sign up for the 14 day free trial and okay. just give it a spin. You can't lose, but I think that you're gonna like it. So we're going through and they have some um, uh, lessons in it. So we're gonna go through some of those each time till we all get used to it. So um, this last one we talked about was um, um, saving time, right? So uh, there were some ideas. One of them was uh, a great time to send a video is your initial lead response. So we all know 
that uh, when you get these leads, especially if they're not like a direct lead from a friend or an agent, that it's hard to get in touch with the people. Um, a lot of times, you know, it's like impossible. But I think if you had some evergreen lead, uh, videos, and I think it's worth your time to make probably five or six of the evergreen videos, the ones you can use over and over, and you send the video to them, then it's, you know, it's intriguing to, to see somebody talking. You, you would click on it just because of, um, you know, your curiosity. The other thing to do, which I you know, didn't think about, but the guy has like a whiteboard. And if you really wanted to get somebody's attention, then you hold up, you know, you hold up a whiteboard and it says, you know, hi, Lauren. Well, who's not going to click on that if somebody's holding up a whiteboard with your name on it, right? Your curiosity would get the best of you. And then uh, you can do, uh, if you wanted to do a custom video, and once you get good at it, it only takes a few minutes. Um, you know, so we're, so with all these videos, especially uh, the initial contact ones, we're trying to work in three things. So empathy, value, and action. So uh, the way that one example of doing that would be to say, hey, I know how frustrating the market is right now for buyers. I know how, how uh, uh, hard it is to get a home under contract. So that's my empathy. Now, I, you and I, I, I know how you feel. And then the value is um, one thing uh, here at Van Dyke Mortgage is we can really make the process easy for you. So that's my value. I'm going to make the process easy. And then action at the end was, um, you know, let's get on a phone call. Let me know what's a good time for you. Or, uh, you know, depending where you are in the process, or please click below. They have a little action button and fill out a loan app online if that's appropriate. So that's the whole thing. So we feel for them, we're adding something of value, and then uh, we ask them to do something. So, um, Stephen, can I interrupt you? I'm sure. sorry. I have a question. You mentioned leads. I'm assuming these other people are getting some leads. Where do you guys get your leads from? Well, that is the million dollar question. I mean, I've tried several places. So before oh, they man. got here, I was doing free rate update and they were terrible. Then I invested in Zillow and they weren't that good and they're expensive. And now we're trying to do uh, pay-per-click Google advertising and most all those leads have bad credit. So, I mean, we're just, I, I'm gonna continue to look. If, if you find any uh, good source of leads, let me know. Okay, it's, yeah, I was just curious because um, Luke is doing lead gen with realtors to split okay. that cost. Um, but obviously I can't, I probably can't afford anything major out of my own pocket at this point, but I just wondered if you had something. So, okay, that makes sense. So we're also doing, um, which I just remembered is uh, Nitty and I are going to try this project with, um, it's called Commissions Inc. with um, a real estate office. And we'll see if we get any, uh, we haven't gotten any leads so far, but we'll see how that goes. I mean, okay. if we find a good, lead source i'll pour lighter fluid on it i mean we'll spend the money um you know if if somebody can show me good roi but even online um you know people talk about generating a lot of leads but then you know they really don't close any of them uh, i think a lot of times you know we're in a world where so many people have mortgages and mortgage contacts like in the old days 30, you know, a 30 year old person may have gotten one mortgage in their life. Okay. Mm -hmm. Today, a 30 year person has probably gotten three or four mortgages. Or four. Those people and their friends have gotten them. So, which is fine. Um, but it's a little harder to get that person that's just brand new looking for a mortgage. You know, usually when they got turned to the internet, they've been turned down by a lender or their bank. And they're like, well, Somebody out there will give me a loan. So then they start filling out forms on the internet. So um, I am all ears to find a good lead source. Okay. So when would be a really good time to do these bomb bomb videos? Uh, in my opinion, um, so the initial response is good if you can't get them on the phone. 
The other thing is um, any complex issue that you have to explain to somebody, like uh, I don't understand how escrows work. Why do you need to collect seven months worth of taxes? Don't I pay that every month with my mortgage payment? You should only have to collect one month, right? So, you know, and you're going to have to explain that, that a bomb bomb video would be good for that. The other thing is, uh, has anybody, did anybody see that little video that that woman did with the screen share where she uh, had like a calendar in the background? Did you see that? Where she had a calendar yeah. in the background? Yeah, I did see that, yes. That was I, the thought, last one. I thought that was terrific. Now, I'm not sure if she's the processor or the originator, but I thought that was terrific. So, Devel, you can actually do a video where you're a little, you have a little face down at the bottom, and then you uh, share your screen. So your screen could have a document or anything or the camera, and then you're down at the bottom. So, um, you know, she had a calendar, and she's like, okay, look, you know, you need to get me your stuff right here by the 12th so that we'll have plenty of time to get the appraisal in here and then we can close you here. And it it really, to me, was really powerful because you know, one of the big hurdles you have when you do higher end loans is that uh, the people feel like you know, they don't wanna waste their time giving you documentation right. or they send you one paycheck stub and say, look, I make enough money. Why are you giving me such a hassle, right? They don't understand that the quality of their loan has nothing to do with the documentation. We have to get all the documentation for everybody, right? right. So, um, so that is showing them the timetable visually like that, I thought was really powerful. Um, the other thing is, um, let's see. So, that, so that's basically it. So the intro and then anything that's complex. Does anybody have any ideas about that? I mean, okay. I, I like them. I love the idea of the initial lead response, right. putting yourself, you know, just sending a quick, because that can be such a quick little video, just like, hey, I'm Lauren, you know, this is, this is what we're gonna do. Get back in touch with me, you know, puts a face to a name. I, I love that one. And I've talked to more than one person that says, you know, once they, they learn to do this and they have the app on their phone, they're like, I can literally send a video response to this person's question faster and easier than I can type the answer. So there you go. Okay, so um, um, go ahead. Steven, do you think IT or marketing can work with us? And maybe every time someone fills the application on our portal, the automated video goes to them. Is that possible? So when they fill out the application. Um, right. So you know. I'm just like, say, hey there, I saw that you have filled the application. I'm so glad that you did it so, and I'll be running numbers. So there is an automated uh, video that's sent to them. And I wonder if they can make it uh, one that you do. Yeah, more personal, personalized. So I'm thinking yeah. that, I mean, the technology is there. Um, I don't know. I, I'm not, I'm not sure. They may have, it, they may have something like that. Um, Cause our, they're going to talk about the new app today. Right. So maybe so they have an option within the app that could do something like that. Right. Yeah, so nice. we're going to be leaving Flowify and using this other app system called Simple Nexus. And from what I understand, it has all the features that Flowify has, plus a couple extras. So yeah, I mean, no reason why uh, you can't ask them that question on the call. So, okay. So then we, uh, we watched a video, did everybody see this about the uh, Brandon Burks, about his doing a lunch and learn on the MLO masterclass? Mm -hmm. Did you see that, Nitty? Yes, yes, okay. I did. Okay, so Devel, I don't know if you, I sent out uh, the login and the password. I don't know if you got it or had time to watch it. But anyway, um, so this is a guy who, uh, he didn't really seem that impressive when I saw him talk, but then he closed like a, a hundred and something million dollars. I mean, it was really crazy. So he was a basketball coach at a high school and then he became a, uh, uh, an originator and just did a ton of business. But um, 
So there were a couple. So what stood out? So there are a couple of reasons for his success, Lauren. What anything stick out to you? Um, yeah, he he talked a lot about like making personal connections with people. Um, you know, being more than just a transactional kind of loan originator, and being more about building those relationships. And he also uh, took advantage of that strategy, which I like, was be the mayor of your town. Now, he was in a smaller town, right? He said there were only two major high schools, so it had to be a small town. Um, and uh, it's a little bit easier in a small town, but you could certainly do this in Winder, uh, where you're known as kind of the town expert on everything. Um, so you're doing that quick interview with the guy at the tire store, with the guy at the pizza shop or whatever little businesses, the place you get your hair done. And, and then it's like, you know, you'll get these random calls from people asking you things that you're like, how the heck would I know that? But it's because they think of you as the town expert and, right. you know, Nitty, and you can zero in on Johns Creek. So uh, even though we're in a big 5 million person city, Johns yeah. Creek is probably, I don't know, maybe a hundred thousand. So yeah, so that thing, don't don't hesitate about getting out in the community. Where where are you, Deville? I forgot what city. I'm in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Okay, so it's a pretty big uh, city. Yeah. Can, is are you in like uh, some sort of like suburb or area that is identifiable? No, I'm in the actual city, but we do have a couple outer like outer skirt cities like Los right. Lunas and Rio Rancho that are fairly close they're not too far away okay so the idea we're talking about is to try and present the image online of being the mayor of your town so uh okay. you do these uh little interviews or uh uh postings about local businesses and all that and then you're just associated with the town and then when you contact people about uh, mortgage they already think of you as being the person okay all right that's a good idea so he did that to big success. And um, he also uh, is teaching, uh, doing lunch and learns with real estate agents. And the way he sells that, you know, so I'm listening to that and I'm thinking, yeah, I tried one and it was kind of a failure because uh, we couldn't get agents to show up. And I can kind of make excuses about that, but really um, I'm not really sure what I did wrong. But one of the things that he did to sell it was he did a panel of kind of top producing real estate agents. So agents have big uh, egos. So you ask them, say, listen, you know, you're, you're, you're so well known and terrific in the Johns Creek area. We're having a lunch and learn. And I'd love for you to be on a panel and talk for a few minutes. And, you know, their ego is going to be like, oh, yeah, sure. I love talking about myself. So uh, maybe you get three agents or four agents to be on a panel and then you sell them, especially you look at the ones that have teams and a lot of them have teams and you say, this is a great opportunity for you to recruit the other agents that are coming to hear you, you speak. They may be a good team member if you're looking to recruit some new uh, real estate agents and a lot of them are. So that's kind of how you sell them on being on the panel. And then once you get some top agents on the panel, it's easy to sell the uh, other agents to come to your event. Um, well, and can I say something? Yeah. I loved how, I don't remember, I feel like maybe it was somebody on our book club call who said something about, you know, they were doing these, no, I, I don't remember, one of our other meetings. But anyways, she said that she was doing like the first time home buyers class or the classes for the realtors to help educate them. And then eventually the realtors were like, well, wait, are you talking about the same thing like every month? Or are you talking about different things? That so was something that, okay, so something that he said that I really liked was the idea of, okay, so one month you have a realtor panel and then the next month you have an appraisal panel where you have different appraisers from all over come or you have a builder panel. So you're offering these different things that people are interested in instead of just drilling in kind of the same information over and over and over again. That, it, that sounds like a great idea. It may be a little bit tougher to get those. There's so many real estate agents. So it's kind of a bigger pond to fish in. Right. Uh, you know, trying to get three appraisers together would be like an impossibility. <laughs> right. but, but the um, idea behind it is a good idea. 
So what I think um, to do something different is maybe change the uh, topic. So the one first one is about, um, you know, finding new customers and the second or, or about working with buyers. And the next one is about getting new listings. And the next one is the proper way to have an open house and things like that. And, uh, you know, here's an opportunity for you to come listen to uh, some of the top real estate agents Together, they represent $200 million in real estate business, learn from the experts, and come to our free uh, seminar and uh, get some donuts and coffee, too. So uh, that may be a little bit easier is just to change the subject. But yeah, I think that these meetings um, are going to be more prevalent as people get comfortable with COVID uh, fading. Um, and I think that you know it allows you to get one-on-one -on -one with everybody. And you may catch one of those whales. They may just say, you know, this is so terrific. I was able to recruit a young real estate agent. I kind of owe uh, Nitty uh, something. So maybe I'll send her my next deal and see how she does. So, um, you know, that's that's kind of one, one way to think about it. So, okay. Any other uh, questions about that? Okay. The next assignment was I asked you guys, to find you, I asked you what podcast you listen to, and I got a variety of podcasts which were were terrific. But um, as far as real estate podcasts, because when you call a real estate agent, you have to have something of value, and there's not always something new in the mortgage industry to talk about, and that's a pretty dry subject. Uh, they'd rather talk about themselves and their business. So, uh, uh, Nitty, did you find one real estate podcast that? Uh, didn't put you to sleep. I took your I took your suggestion and I listened to the rock um, real estate rock stars and okay. I listened to one podcast. It's just that I'm not used to it. It was so boring that I actually had to pause, take a break, do something, and come back after an hour to listen more. But I listened to one of their podcasts. Yes. So yeah, so real estate rock stars. So if you don't like that one, the other guy. Um, massive agent podcast uh, okay he has a little bit more dynamic personality you may like that one but don't give up so i would suggest oh. trying to listen to two podcasts from uh, or two episodes from a podcast before you you know mark it off the list just in case they have one oh. guest that's terrible or oh. something um sure what was Lauren, that second you... one you just mentioned so massive agent podcast with Dustin Brom. Okay. He's a little bit more irreverent and has a funny personality. Um, and the other thing is you can look through, you know, like iTunes and kind of cherry pick the ones that you think are going to be exciting. And the ones that's talking about, you know, manufactured housing, you can just skip that one and Pick something. I do that all the time with my podcast. I just scroll through to see, like, if this is the topic so I'm not many. interested in, go find another one. Okay. Well, speaking of which, Lauren, did you find any that were about real estate? So, no, I totally failed on that. I did not go look for a new okay. one, but I have listened to the Massive Agent podcast because the guy that okay. you recommended, um, Matt, you no, yes, him, but Matthew Weber, the one who does the Mayor of Dunwoody. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was a guest on there. So I have okay. listened to that. Okay, good. So yeah, so then you can present uh, an idea, whatever it is to, uh, when you talk to a real estate agent, you can say, hey, I just thought of this great idea. Like one of them is, um, you know, the whole market is just crazy and different now. But if you put on your normal real estate market hat for a minute and go back way back in a time machine, like two years, um, you know, one of the suggestions was the FMLS now shows uh, leases that so a lot of real estate agents were doing leases when business was slow, they get a little bit of money, I think they get the first month's rent or something if they get some money, but um, so you, they can look and see when a new lease transaction was done and calculate and then about 11 months into that, call the seller and say, hey, listen, you know, values have gone up so much. You know, how much do you think your property is worth now? They say, I don't know, 350. No, sir, they're going for around four and a quarter in that neighborhood. Instead of leasing it, this may be a good time to sell. And an agent was picking up listings that way. 
Um, and then, so I told that to a couple of my agents and they all thought it was a good idea. Now, I don't know if any of them ever did it, but at least they thought, hey, that Steven is a nice guy. He's trying to help me out. So, um, you know, forges that. What we want to do is, is foster an image of we're business partners. You and I, we're business partners. We have discussions about business and, you know, ROI and profitability and all these things like business people do because we're partners. Um, and then, by the way, do you have anybody that's looking for a, a, a home right now? So, you know, it, um, that's the relationship we're trying to foster. Okay, and uh, Develle, I can send you a list or some links to some podcasts if you want to check them out. Okay, and then on the um, video that you said you sent, you, it's Jordan, right? Harbinger, is that who you were just talking about? So, no, so Jordan Harbinger had, we went oh. through this 12-week uh, networking course. It's a free okay. course. It's called Six Minute Networking. I think it, it's really terrific. I got some good ideas from it. And, okay. um, and it's free. So I would definitely check that out too. Yeah. So that's the one I got. The other one you mentioned, I don't, I don't see anything from you. Uh, the one okay. you guys were so talking I did about prior. So I did a follow up to our last meeting. It said something like uh, branch meeting number 16 follow up. Okay. And in there I put something, but I'll be happy to put it in the, the notes for this meeting. Okay. That would be great. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to talk. Uh, we are moving. Right, uh, okay, any other anything else we want to address before we get to the infamous uh, ten questions? Okay. Okay. Well, Devel, we have this incredibly uh, competitive and high spirited contest every meeting called 10 questions and there is a prize of nothing except our admiration yay so, how you like that okay question number one you have a loan app uh and we're going to talk a little bit about the market because it's been crazy so we you have a loan app at 5 30 p.m the market opened off 30 basis points that day when marketing priced, it was off 24 basis points. So it closed minus six basis points. Should you lock or float that borrower? Right now in this market, lock. That's what I would. So that. That was a semi-trick question. The answer is always advise them to lock in. If you've got a rate that they like and it's a deal that we can make a dollar on, lock that baby in and let's not worry about it. Because let's face it, being a mortgage originator is a tough job and it's a stressful job. If you want to add Wall Street bond trader to that, you know, that's a lot to put on your plate. So I'm going to just keep my knowledge towards the mortgage area and listen to the experts. So I'm knowledgeable about bonds, but I'm not going to play that game. I'm not running my own secondary marketing department. I'm going to lock people in so that I can sleep at night. Okay. You quoted 4% to your borrower and they go online and they say, you know, Nitty on the, uh, I bank with B of A. And if you go right on the website, it says 3.75, 30-year fix, 3.75. Why are they so much lower? Yes, what could, be, there what might could be, be a possible explanation? That you have, there might be a point that you'll have to buy to bring the rate down. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm telling. Yes, yesterday only someone called me and he was like, you are quoting me more. I'm like, if I go online, I'm seeing the rate of 3.25, but I'm quoting you four because then I'll be buying the points from them to lower that rate. She was like, oh, that makes sense. I'm like, yes, that's how it is going to be. So the rate quoted may have points attached. Any or they're other... looking at a, at a prime borrower, somebody who has a really high credit score and awesome DTI and LTV and down payment and all this. And that may not be what your borrower is bringing to the table. 
So the load parameters could be different. It could be that, you know, how you get like an extra little bonus if it's like 60 LTV or something, the pricing is a little bit better, you know, and your guy's trying to get 97% finance. So, and also he may have a 730 credit score. There's a little bit of a hit, you know, if you're under 740 and, the, you know, so the, fi right. So the scenario could be for like this incredibly rare jewel of a loan and your loan is, um, you know, it's silver, it's not quite gold. How about that? So, um, Devel, any other reason that they could possibly uh, show a lower rate online? Those are the only two that come to my mind is what they mentioned already. Okay, it could simply be out of date. Some of these websites update, you know, every couple of days, or maybe they checked in the morning and it had, you know, yesterday's date on it, or so, you know, unless it says, you know, rates as of March 5th, you know, it, it could be, uh, you know, a couple of days back. So those, those three things are, are good reasons. So, um, so, okay, we're going to go, we're going to go way back old school um, because some this subject just came up for me. So when we take a loan application by law, there are six things that are required to make it an application. And the reason why that's significant is because if we take an application, then it triggers our timetables, our disclosures, and all that stuff that we have to do. So, um, Devel, give me, give me the six things you need to make an official application. Uh, I know it's name, social, date of birth, um, property or subject address, property address, um, ah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know all of them. Okay, so those is that so, four? So, so those are three out of four. So date of okay. birth is not one of them. Okay. So Lauren, what else uh, might be uh, included? Well, what else is definitely included in that list? Um, income. Yes. Okay. You're missing credit score. No. You're missing two more. So what else, Nitty? One of them is obvious. Name, SSN, income. Their assets are there. No, no, I know it's not that. Is it the purchase property address? Well, we already said that. So, oh, okay. um, so one of them is loan amount, oh. right? So they have to actually uh, uh, has to have a loan amount. And it also, this is the one that I always forget, it has to have a property value. So it's name, income, social security number, address, property value, and loan amount. Okay. Hey, Stephen. Uh-huh. I am so sorry to interrupt. I have to go. I have another meeting now at 10. Okay. So I, I'm going to have to head out. Okay. Well, it was great having you, DeVille, and I'm going to send you the follow-up notes. Okay. Thank you so much, everybody. I apologize to interrupt. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, okay. So let's talk about uh, geopolitics. Uh, so we got a war going on in uh, the Ukraine. So why would a war in the Ukraine possibly lower interest rates? We've seen rates improve, right? Since the war broke out. We had that one bad day, what, the day before yesterday. Is it the, the volatility of everything going on over there that they want to... I don't know, make it, make it better over here a little more. I feel like I know what I'm trying to say. I just can't find the words to say it. So go ahead, Nitty. What is your thought? Is it because the oil prices are going up? That's why the rates would come down or no, it's nothing to do with the oil prices. Um, so here's the thing. So money goes into one of three places. So the stock market is, is kind of the biggie 
<clears throat> and then um, the bond market and especially mortgage bonds are considered a safe haven. So that's why bonds pay so little, I don't know, one or 2% interest because they're, they're very, very secure. So uh, what happens is when people, when there's war, people get nervous. They just don't know what's gonna happen. And the stock market hates uncertainty. You've probably seen how the stock market, you know, has these thousand point swings because every time somebody gets nervous, they're like, I need to be out of stocks. I don't know what's gonna happen. I can put the money in bonds. It'll make a few, few dollars over the next few days, but it's safe. The money's gonna be there tomorrow. So as people buy more and more bonds, the, um, the price of the bonds go up and the yields come down. So that is why um, you know, international unrest can um, cause or usually causes mortgage rates to go down. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, and it usually causes the stock market to get hurt. So um, right now there's so much volatility because we just don't know. And I can bet you that as soon as that war gets settled, then you'll see mortgage rates go up uh, you know, a good bit. So what about the times that, uh, you know, how can also <laughs> the war in Iraq uh, uh, and the Ukraine, um, how can that also hurt mortgage rates? I mean, some days they get worse. It's very complex, I know, but let's, let's try and get a little bit better understanding and Nitty hit on something. So, uh, you know, Russia provides the world with oil and because of what's going on, you see the price of oil go up, up, up. I would say the next time you fill up your gas tank, maybe the most you ever paid. So, uh, so we see that happening. And how would that um, cause interest rates to go up, Nitty? I mean, what the heck does the price of oil have to do with mortgage rates in the United States? Okay, so when prices of things like energy go up, then um, it puts pressure on inflation. Well, it's inflationary, right? So inflation goes up. We've had recently very high inflation numbers after inflation being tame for years and years and years and years. It's been like under 3%. And now all of a sudden we get these crazy uh, inflation numbers. And we're trying to decide, you know, the Fed said, well, it was a one-off. We got this crazy inflation number, but it was a one-off. And then it's a two-off, and then it's a three-off. And then it's like, well, maybe we really have inflation. So um, and the way we discussed it before is inflation um, is bad for interest rates. So that is a universal. That you can, you can count on. So why, why um, Lauren, would inflation be bad for interest rates? Well, when the cost of goods go up and it costs more to buy them, then I'm assuming it would cost more to back them. So, um, so kind of, sort of. So here's the thing. So if you get a 30-year mortgage, you know, I'm keeping, if I'm the lender, I'm keeping your rate the same for mm -hmm. 30 years, okay? Right. And I've got these historical tables and data and this and that that tells me I could take the, um, you know, the short-term money, turn it into long-term money and add this and that. And historically, this is where I should be as far as mortgage rates. But then things happen that are um, uh, not traditionally, not historically traditional. So uh, like a war breaking out and uh, you see this crazy, you know, oil go sky high. So what's happening with inflation is future dollars are worth less, right? So if we have high inflation that $100 a year from now may only be worth $98, right? Uh -huh. When you go to the grocery store, you sure figure that out quick. So um, if you're paying me with dollars that are worth less, then I've got to get a little extra on my interest rate because I'm thinking, oh, well, you know, Lauren's going to be paying me with dollars in the future and they're going to be worth less than I'm expecting. So I just got to charge a higher interest rate so that I'm covered. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. Okay. 
So yeah, so inflation is really a, a bad word in our industry. Um, and um, anyway, I'm not gonna say anything political, but that, but that part is bad. Okay, so we got off track, but I think it's good that we have a little bit of an understanding. So it's talking points with the customer. And the fact is we don't know where interest rates are gonna, where they go. I can tell you that we're gonna see some pretty wild swings until this war gets settled, because every time they think it's going to be settled, it's going to, uh, you know, cause rates to get worse. And then every time they yeah. capture a nuclear power plant, then the, you know, it's going to cause havoc in the stock market, and it's going to money's going to flow into the bond market. So, um, all right. Well, here's an easy question. So, when does daylight savings time start? This weekend, Sunday, twelfth March, thirteenth March, whatever the date is. We try, I have three kids. We try not to think about that. Yeah, I don't know why we still do it. But anyway. So, March, Sunday. Sunday. And it's what? Uh, so what? Do, so daylight savings. So it goes back. We, oh, wait. We forward, uh, spring forward. Spring forward, fall back. So 2 a.m. becomes 3 a.m. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. I think that's no. exactly. 2 a.m. becomes one. No, it becomes yeah, three. Three. Right. three. So you lose yeah. an hour. Yeah, we lose an hour. Right. I think that's exactly when they do it. 2 a.m. becomes 3 a.m. All right, you guys. Well, we had a uh, terrific, informative call. Anything else you want to say? Congratulations, Nitty, on your uh, big prize. And um, Stephen, I have please. a question. Okay. Um, let's see if I can go back to my email. I talking with the experience.com people because I'm determined to figure out how to connect experience with Zillow because it's, you know, I don't want to have to ask the customer twice for reviews. If they leave a review on experience and then have to ask them to go back and do another one on Zillow. So she sent me an email and said, there's a secondary workflow where, where they can, where experience sends someone who leaves a review on experience to Zillow. Do you know how that works? Yeah, I can tell you that it's not going to work because the reason is that uh, those referrals can only or reviews can only go one way. Uh, if they do a review on Zillow, then so the receiver has to give permission. So experience.com or whatever will allow uh, the import of Zillow reviews to their system. But right, Zillow, they post the Zillow reviews on their on the experience. They they post the Zillow. So I was asking her, is there a way to post? You know, so hold on, hold on. Together. I'm gonna explain. Hold on, I'm gonna explain it to you. So they have to have this IP uh, code, and Zillow will not give anybody permission to funnel reviews from their site into Zillow. It would right. ruin the integrity of their uh, data. So that's never going to happen regardless of what she tells you. I'm sorry. So yeah, she said they have specific guidelines. You know, Zillow is real specific, but she said they have a secondary workflow to send customers to them separately in efforts to boost your online presence. She said, if you have questions, let me know. So of course I asked her. So I'm trying to find out how this secondary workflow works where they, she's saying that they send your customers from experience to Zillow. I mean, they can actually like put a link in there for them to go to Zillow, but, um, and that's fine. But yeah, so we need to get a review either on Zillow or um, Google, A or B. Um, and yeah, if they fill out the one with Experian first, then um, they have to do another one. Okay. I know, and I hate that because so many of them write these long, detailed reviews on experience, and I'm like, nobody sees this, you know? Like, who uses experience.com? Yeah. Well, the ones on experience update to my main website with Van Dyke, and that's been really helpful. So when I send people to go, like, fill out a loan, I'm like, here's my main webpage, and you can look at reviews and all this kind of stuff. People kind of like that one. Yeah. 
yeah so that you know so there is i guess some usefulness to it but um yeah i'd rather them not even ask them to do that experience review so that they're not having to do two reviews i get it i i totally get it um okay any other questions i have one it's not related to this call but let's say if the customer is right now living in a house and they are going to rent it out the rental agreement starts from 1st of April, but I have the rental agreement that the rent starts coming on 1st of April. Can we use that as an income or no? So it's possible. Um, it has to do, there's different parameters if they have a history of receiving real income or whether it's the first time they have uh, gotten real income. So uh, I believe you, if they have a one-year lease signed, then um, you can use 75% of that uh, rental income, but definitely check with the underwriter. I'm not sure um, if there is um, uh, different overlays to that guideline. Got it. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Okay. Well, we'll see you guys have a, a great weekend and uh, we'll see you later. Sure. Right, Thank you. Bye.